Hello. Oh, I'm just polishing up all my tools. Have I shown you this before? This is a tool for measuring maps. With this, I can tell how far it is from one point to another out on the ocean. Yeah. Oh, and this tool, this is called a compass. And with this tool, I can find my way home. This one is really important. And then there's this one. Now, it may not be as big or as shiny as some of the others, but it's very important too, just like all my tools. You know, it's just like the big harbor here. You see, every boat and ship who floats is very important. Of course, the tugs weren't so sure about that the other day. See, that's when Digby, the cable ship, had a bit of a disaster. Theodore and Hank were cruising through the harbor one fine morning when Fodak floated up, looking very serious. Theodore? Hank? called the safety tug. I have just received an important message from the dispatcher. Digby is stuck near the sandy beach. Not again, said Hank. You see, it seems Digby, the little cable ship who lives in the harbor, is always getting stuck somewhere. Oh, hello, tugboats, said Digby. I was laying this here cable of mine kind of fast so I could welcome Darkman. And, and I guess I kind of got jibberty spiggity stuck. Dartmouth, repeated Theodore. Who's Dartmouth? Oh, why, why, Dartmouth is a cable ship who's coming to the big harbor, replied Digby. And since he's new here, well, I thought maybe I could help him out a bit. But we want to meet him too, said Hank right away. After we pull you out, smiled Theodore. As soon as Theodore and Hank got Digby unstuck, they all hurried up together to welcome Dartmouth. They were just turning around a bend along the shore when they heard a deep horn. And there he was. He's big, said Theodore. He's new, said Digby. He's Fresh, said Hank. Fresh was the only word Hank could think of right then. And besides, it sounded terrific. The great cable ship had almost finished laying a giant cable along the shore. Hello, Theodore called to Dartmouth. My name is Theodore. Welcome to the big harbor. And I'm Hank, said Hank. Greetings galore, said Digby. My name is Digby. I'm a cable ship too, same as you. Theodore and Hank looked from the scratched-up Digby to the sleek, smooth, supersized Dartmouth. He sure doesn't look the same as Digby, said Hank. Hank, whispered Theodore. Maybe I could help you with your cables, Digby started to say. You see, cables are my business, too. Now, do you like to lower your cables slow or, or not so slow? Digby was really looking forward to having a nice long chat about cables with Dartmouth. But by then, Emily, George, and Fodak arrived. They had seen Dartmouth, and the sight of the powerful-looking ship made them float right over. My name is George, thundered George. What's yours? My name is Dartmouth, said Dartmouth. He's a cable ship, said Theodore. Have you been across the ocean? asked Fodak. Oh, I've been across all the oceans, replied Dartmouth in a pleasant sort of way. All the oceans? gasped Emily. Well, I just brought this cable across the ocean to your harbor, Dartmouth went on. I know it's really good places to lay cables here, said Digby. Oh, cables are my business. But then, George nudged the smaller ship aside. That's the biggest cable I've ever seen, he said. Did you ever get stuck? asked Hank. Oh, I never get stuck, replied Dartmouth. Digby always gets stuck, said Hank. Hank! whispered Theodore. It's not Digby's fault. All the tugs crowded around to listen to Dartmouth. Digby he felt like there wasn't any room for him anymore. Maybe, maybe I'll help Dartmouth some other time, he thought to himself, and slowly floated away.
bright and early the next morning, Digby puffed off to visit Dartmouth at his dock. The harbor was calm and quiet, and this looked like Digby's chance to have a nice long chat about cables. Hello, Dartmouth, boomed George in his biggest George voice. All the tugs were coming to visit Dartmouth on their way to work. Did you finish laying your cable yet? No, not yet, replied Dartmouth. How long is your cable? asked Foduck. Well, what do you do if there's a storm on the ocean? asked Emily. What if a giant whale eats your cable? asked Hank, trying to think of a good question, too. I can help you lay the rest of your cable, said Digby. Cables are my business, and Digby, said George. Dartmouth doesn't need your help. Once again, with all the tugs crowding around Dartmouth, Digby felt like there wasn't any room for him. This time, Digby just floated away without a word. Have you noticed that Digby is acting kind of strange? said Theodore. Yes, said Hank right away. He hadn't gotten stuck today. Hank, I mean, he seems kind of sad, said Theodore. I guess I'll just check me old cables, Digby decided. Digby floated along the shore, making sure that all his old cables were shipshape. Who oh, dares Dartmouth's new cable? he said softly. It was so important looking compared to his cables. Suddenly, he saw a sight that made his eyebrows stand up. The brand new cable was slipping and sliding back into the water. Oh, my starfish and little oysters, shivered Digby. Oh, what'll I do? Digby could see that in another moment, the cable would sink, sink right to the bottom of the harbor. Dartmouth was still talking to the tugs way over there on the other side of the harbor. There was no one around but Digby. Oh, this is a disaster, cried Digby. Still, he knew he had to try to do something. Digby let his cable go loose. And just managed to grab Dartmouth's cable. He began hauling Dartmouth's heavy steel cable towards him. Now came the really hard part. to get this curmudgeon cable back to shore, he gasped. There was only one thing to do. Digby turned towards the shore with the cable and fired his engine. All the tugs were still talking about Dartmouth. Very modern, proclaimed Photon. Very powerful, boomed George. He's been everywhere, said Emily. He never gets stuck, shouted Hank. Now that reminded Theodore about Digby. Digby is an important ship too, he told his friends. Just then, Fodunk's special radio crackled. It's a message from the dispatcher, he called. He says Digby has gotten stuck. Not again, groaned George. The tugs hurried off to help rescue the little cable ship. There he is, shouted Emily. Sure enough, Digby was stuck up on the shore, and he had Dartmouth's cable slung right over his deck. Well, what are you doing with Dartmouth's cable? asked Emily. You shouldn't be fooling around with someone else's cables like that, frowned George. It, it was it was slipping and sliding and sinking and all oh, flipperty jibberty, sputtered Digby. He was so out of breath he could barely speak. My cable. It was Dartmouth sounding very concerned. Oh, that's just Digby, explained George. He gets stuck a lot, said Emily. It's really not his fault, added Hank, trying to be helpful. Digby? said Theodore, floating closer to the little cable ship. What really happened? Well, said Digby, catching his breath at last, this here cable was falling right into the harbor, so I pulled it up on the sand here. I probably didn't leave my cable in such a good place, said Dartmouth. Thank you, Digby. 
If you hadn't been here, this would have been a disaster. Well, all the tugs were very surprised. Deepy, you saved Dartmouth's cable, said Emily. And we thought you just got stuck again, said George. We're sorry, Digby, said Foda. No apologizing necessary, said Digby. But I, I really am stuck. Do you, do you mind? Don't worry, Digby, said Theodore. We'll pull you out. was floating again. Where am I going to lay the rest of this cable? wondered Dartmouth. Maybe Digby can help you, suggested Theodore. Would you mind, Digby? asked Dartmouth. I bet you know all the good places along the shore here to lay cable. Would I mind? answered Digby with a giant-sized smile in his voice. Why, I'd be tickled pinker than a lobster at a picnic. I think that means yes, said Photo. We better go to work, shouted George. The tugs hurried off to work, and Digby floated up beside Dartmouth. Do you like to lower your cable slow or not so slow? asked Digby. Oh, oh, that's a very good question, said Dartmouth. A very good question. And I was also wondering, how do you keep from getting stuck? Well, those two cable ships spent that whole long, lazy afternoon just telling cable stories. Later that day, after they had finished work, the tugs hurried over to Digby's dock. Well, I'd be a mud carps uncle, said Digby, when he saw the tugs. What brings you out here? I'd like you to tell us about saving Darkness Cable, said George. Yes. Please do, said Photo. And don't leave out anything, added Emily. All the tugs crowded around to listen to Digby. You see, began Digby, cables are my business. You know, said Hank, Digby is a pretty important ship. Oh, Digby is very important, smiled Theodore. Very important. Yes, Digby is a very important ship here in the Big Harbor. And you know, like I was telling you, all of my tools are very important to me. But at the moment, this little tool right here is probably the most important one I have. You see, this tool opens this can of seaweed for my lunch. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. And we'll see you all again next time. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be great. Peanut butter and seaweed sandwiches. My favorite. Yeah. Oh, boy, look at that. You don't know what you're missing.